Hello guys, today I thought to discuss with you about some of the interview questions if you are thinking to become a PHP developer and especially full stack PHP developer. So uh, because I have interviewed several uh, developers recently, so I know what are the uh, hot questions these days in case of uh, PHP development. First of all, they might ask you, how do you rate yourself in PHP? This is a very important question. So you need to be careful about that. You should not go below five and should not go more than eight these days. Okay, because uh, if you have just graduated, so your skill is not like nine or 10 at all. So you must be like six or seven. Uh, that should be uh, good enough because that will match your salary then. So you need to be careful about that, okay? Uh, second thing is what, uh, now these are the tech stuff. What are the global variables in PHP? There are several global variables in PHP and they start with dollar sign underscore like request or post or get, okay? So you need to see what are the other variables also. Okay, how do you redirect a page? So for example, this is your page and you want to redirect this page to demo1.php. This page is demo.php and you want to go to this, the other page demo1.php. So in this case, you will use this header method. Okay, so I can just quickly show it to you. So here, this is my path demo. Maybe you cannot see that it's too small. Okay, let me make it bigger also. So this is my current page, localhost demo demo.php, okay? And I am right now, <clears throat> when I refresh that page, okay? Or you can say I copy this, copy and go there and paste it, hit enter, I see hi. So where is this hi coming from? I don't have hi here. This is my demo.php file. So actually I'm redirecting immediately going to demo one and demo one shows hi. Notice, so this is redirect. Okay, by the way, they might ask you, what if, if we put at sign here? So you need to tell that at sign is used to uh, see if there is any error. So if there is any error, it will hide actually from the customer. Okay, sometimes we have such kind of errors. Okay, so now uh, that is one thing. So let me delete this one. What is the role of PHP INI file? Very important question. So for example, if I go there and I type my local host, just local host. Okay, so this is my XAMPP I'm using. I'm using XAMPP. And here's PHP info. Maybe it's still small. PHP info, when you click there, you will see this this is actually loading PHP INI, PHP info.php, it loads PHP INI. And it has all the rules and configuration uh, that how PHP should behave. Okay, so PHP INI is telling. For example, if I go and type MySQL I, notice MySQL I, it's enabled. I can disable it. So where to disable it? That is INI file. And there are many other things here, uh, like JSON is enabled, I can disable that one. Okay, XML library is there. So many other things are there that are being controlled or configured at the backend. So where is that? For that one, you need to pull up this guy that when we use XAMPP and config, click there, PHP INI here. This is the PHP INI file. Okay, I want to disable MySQL, so I will, find where is my SQL, this is extension. Okay, here it is. So this is my P uh, my SQL I, and notice <clears throat> some of the others, they have the semicolon. Semicolon means these are hidden. They are disabled, 
but MySQL I is not disabled because semicolon is missing. Semicolon is like comment in like in Java. In Java, we comment like double slashes, right? Forward slashes. But in this PHP and I, we put semicolon. So if I put semicolon before that, I must save it. Now, whenever you change anything, you must be careful in this one because it's going to change the behavior of PHP. So save it, go here in this one, stop you have to stop Apache and then restart because restart will load this. If you don't stop and restart, the newly changes will not be uh, actually uh, in place. So I refresh this page and uh, I type MySQL I and MySQL I is gone. That one is not there. This is just this thing. I cannot find anymore. It's not enabled anymore, okay? So in that case, uh, I should put it back because I use my SQL I. So save it, go back, stop it, start again. It's green now. Go there, refresh the page, my SQL I. Now see it's back. Okay, and it's enabled. So you need. This is a very common question. Let me close this one. Next, where are the sessions stored in XAMPP or in PHP? How to find the storage session storage path? Basically, they are, they are stored in temp folder, but can we programmatically find that? Yes, we can find that. And I can show you here. This is the method. This is called session save path. Session save path return the path of the current directory used to save the session data. Okay, so this method is used. Next, by the way, my first employer asked me this question, where are the sessions stored? Okay. In an HTML form, what is the difference between uh, get and post method? Okay, so this is my demo.php here. Okay, let's say, uh, I think I have already a form, why not I just, because this is just HTML. Okay, uh, sorry, not here. I'm going to delete this one. This simple HTML form, okay? It has a get method and input type text, email and submit button. And I'm going to put here action so that we can go to the next page, demo1.php. And on demo1.php, I will get email and show it here. Notice that global variable request Okay, so this is my page. Let's go back to my demo one, sorry, demo.php. This is my simple page. This is the same form here. Now actually, uh, the major thing is get. So get is, if I put this submit and on the next page, I'm getting it and showing it. So I send to demo1.php and here I request means I get it. By the way, I can use get also here, okay, but I cannot use post. Okay, request is common for both, but if you are using get on the other side, the sender side like get, so you will use get here or you use request here, okay? find out some other global variables as I said before like dollar score dollar underscore post another one okay <clears throat> now the thing is uh, get so when we I use get right so when I see the URL you need to check the URL copy this uh, I'm just showing you here this is my URL when I use get. It has demo1.php question mark and email and my email address. So if you're sending password or credit card information, SSN number, you should not use get because every anybody sitting nearby can see that what's going on, okay? Or even it's really easy for hackers also. Although post is also not difficult, but it's very obvious here. We can see everything, okay? So it's not a good idea. But what is the benefit of get then? If we, first of all, we can see that second thing is we can bookmark this page 
bookmark because it has all the URL information that is needed to reload page next time. Okay, but if I use post and I go back, refresh, refresh and send some other information. Now you see, I copy my URL, URL, okay, just to show it to you here. See the difference. Now with post, this is the URL. With get, this is the URL, okay? In post, information is hidden, it's not there. So this is good in terms of username, password, and all those CSS, uh, SSN and credit card information, okay? But it has one small drawback. If I want to refresh this page in case of post, I see this pop-up. You see always confirm what is happening because the developer has used post there. I say continue so we can see that. Another drawback is I cannot bookmark this page. If I bookmark this page, next time I will come, it will give me error. Okay, why? Because this information is missing, which is available in get. So in case of get, we have all the information in URL so you can bookmark it. In post, you better don't bookmark it. Okay. Number two, uh, number another, number seven, sorry. In an HTML form, what happens if we don't have action attribute? I'm talking about this. If we don't have action, if I remove it, what happened now? Earlier, we submit from here and we go to demo1.php because it says go to demo1. But what happened if I don't have this one? This is a very common, simple, very, very simple question. So let's go back, refresh this page, send information, submit, and it comes back to this page. So I copy this URL to show it to you. So again, we are same. I call this page, hit enter again, I'm in the same page. So action will, if no action, by default, the same page is called again. Okay, next. Uh, what is the difference between include and require? For example, here, if I use include, and I have a file that I want to include, abc.php, but in case if abc.php is not there, so it will give me a warning. But if I say require, require will give me error. So in case of warning, you can still see the underneath data in the same page, but if it is required, it gives error because abc.php does not exist. So in this case, the underneath information is not shown. Okay, so you need to see what is require, what is uh, include, what is uh, require once. Okay, require underscore once, what does it mean? What is uh, include once? These are very important questions. Okay, what is include difference between all these things? Okay, please see them. What are the extra headers and PHP mail function? You can send email uh, using email function using a mail actually function in PHP, which actually sends email. So what are the extra headers there? So let me show it to you in a very simple way. When you send email, we have these basic three things, two subject message, okay? In, in the mail, we have uh, this mail function in PHP and has two subject message, a common one. But extra header means if you have from and CC and BCC. So these things are extra headers. Okay, next. What does an inner join do in MySQL DB? Okay, I can show you a very simple thing. Inner join is used when you have two tables and they have a matching value in both the tables. So inner join keyword selects record that have the matching value in both the tables. For example, customer ID, customer ID, we have two columns and record, those records that are common, they will be picked up like customer ID two, customer ID two. So this will be picked up, okay? Another question is, uh, what does full outer join do in MySQL DB? So full outer join like this, full outer join keyword returns all records when there is a match in left or right table. If there is match in either one, 
it will show everything. So please look at these things in detail. In a MySQL table, what is the difference between varchar and text data type? Okay, so in uh, which one is better? If you have uh, uh, address, for example, which one, which data type you will go for? Customer address, varchar or text? So in this case, varchar, you can create index on that uh, and it's faster because we're putting index. We can also put index on text, but we have to specify certain size of characters that put index on this number of characters and ignore others. So please see this one, Varchar is faster than text in terms of indexing. So if they are satisfied with your answer so far, they can ask you, okay, we will send you an assignment to do and you will return the, your code in a week time. Okay, they want to see, uh, it is possible that you can solve that assignment, of course, and you will send it to them, but they're not just looking at simple assignment that input output is working. They're also looking for uh, efficient coding. For example, for example, this is just example, but you, it's good also for your reference. Maybe they're looking for that. Do you use group by in your SQL query or not? So what is group by? Without group by, you can also see the records. What is the difference between group by and not using group by? Because group by is smarter than not using group by, okay? So you need to see this thing. I, I recommend you look into this simple group by, especially in data science, we use this group by a lot, okay? So see these things, okay? Uh, if you have any question, you can put questions in the, dis in the comments. I will try to answer those questions. Okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.